Yes, hello there and welcome. Now today I want us to balance chemical equations beginning from copper reacting with oxygen, we get copper 2 oxide. So you can balance it directly or there is another formula that you can use in balancing chemical equations. So let's begin. We are going to balance copper with oxygen uh, whereby we are, our product is copper 2 oxide. So as you can see here, we have letter A, then we have letter B, and then after letter B we have letter C for that compound which is copper 2 oxide. So with this method we are going to compare all the letters and then finally we have a designated value for each and every atom so as to be able to know well how to balance the equation. So let's begin. So here for copper as you can see we only have one A for copper. Then the copper is reacting with oxygen. So oxygen has been given the letter B like that. And then on the product side, we have the copper 2 oxide whereby that is designated as letter C for that whole product. So for letter C, we have two elements under letter C. So the first element under letter C, we have copper. And the next element after letter C, we have oxygen. So in here, what you are going to do, you are going to compare. If this side we have one copper, that side we also have one copper and note it down etc. So let's begin. This is how we are going to do it. So in here, we only have one letter A. So we are going to write letter A like that. So here we have one letter A for copper. And then this other side, how many copper do we have? We only have one copper and a letter C. So if we have one copper and a letter C, we only write is equal to C. This is like the equal sign. So we have one A is equal to C. So this is what happens. For example, if we had, if we had two, two of copper, so this is what we could have done. We could have said that 2A, like that 2A, is equal to that one, which is C. For example, uh, for example, also for C, if we had two or three or four, let's say if we had five C over there, uh, the copper that is. If we had five copper like that, we could have said 2A is equals to 5 of C. So 2A is equals to 5 of C. That's what we could have said. So we could have written 5C like that. But now for our case, we see that we only have, we only have one copper in under A and one uh, copper under C. So if we have one, in chemistry, we don't write one. We don't write one A is equals to 1C. We don't write like that. 1 is equals to 1C. So if the value is 1, we ignore that one, but always try to remember that there is 1. So we only write the element and not really ignoring. We only write the element and if it's 2 and above, that's when we indicate now the number. So according to this case, we only have A, which is A. 1A is equals to 1C for copper. Like that, for C. So we are done with A because A only has one element. So let's now go to B and compare oxygen with oxygen. So in comparison of oxygen with oxygen, what we are going to do, we are going to begin again from B. Now for B, you see that we have two, uh, B is oxygen, but we have two molecules of oxygen, or rather we have two oxygen atoms making up that molecule. So for B, what we are going to say, we have two. So we are going to say 2B, is equal to how many oxygens do we have under C? So we have 2B is equal to 1 oxygen or 1 C. So 2B is equals to is equals to C, like that. Remember, that oxygen atom is only one. So we don't indicate uh, the numerical value one. We only indicate numerical value from two and above. So this is what we have. We have 1A is equals to 1 C. And then going to B, we have 2B, because we have 2, we have 2B is equal to, is equals to 1C, like that. So, let's proceed and balance this equation. So, always begin, if you have already reached here, always begin by saying, A is equal to 1. Always begin by that step, A is equal to 1. So, let's see, let's look at now this. If A is equal to 1, that it will, then it will mean that C is also equal to 1, because... A is 1 and A is equals to C. So if A is 1, it will mean that C is also 1. So now we have the value of A and we have the value of C. 
Now let's look, uh, let's find the value of B. Because here, remember, we have ABC. So we already find the value of A, found the value of B. Now let's look for the value of C. So for the value of C, we can use this formula to calculate the value of C. Uh, of B, rather, the value of B. So of B, what we are going to say, so how do we get B? We'll say that B is equal to this formula. So to get B, B is equal to this formula. So B is equal to 2B minus 2B is equals to C rather. So for us to get B, we can use this formula to get B. Now, the only thing that we are going to do, we are only going to substitute and get the value of B. So look here. We don't have the value of B. So this is the formula that we are working on. 2B is equal to C. So we have the value of C. We, are, we say that C is equal to 1. So if C is equal to 1, so this is what we are going to do. We are going to say 2B is equal to 1 because C, C is equal to 1. So we just substituted with the value that we had gotten earlier. So C is equal to 1. So here we only need to remain with B on that side. So we are going to divide by 2, divide by 2. So this 2 goes with that 2. So finally we have B is equal to a half. So remember, if we write the summary, A is equal to 1, C is equal to 1, and B is equal to a half. So that's what we have gotten from our working. So remember, in balancing chemical equations, we don't use decimals or we don't use fractions. So we only use whole numbers. So in this case, since B is a half, that is a fraction, we'll multiply everything by the LCM of that B, or rather, we are going to multiply everything with the reciprocal of B in order to get the whole number. So, to multiply to the reciprocal of B, if we multiply with the reciprocal of B, we multiply everything. So the multiplication goes along everything so that we balance everything as it is. So multiplied by the reciprocal 2 over 1, multiplied by the reciprocal 2 over 1 times 2 over 1. Then, in mathematics, remember, if any value is over 1, that is the exact value. So in case here, if we have 2 over 1, so it means that we only have 2. So what's going to happen is that we are going to simplify it and say like that and like that. So also here, it's going to be, it's going to be 2. So let's find now the absolute values of A, C, and B. So we have A is equals to 2, B is equals to 2, and C by 2, 1, by 2, 1. So B is equal to 1. So that's the value of our A. This is the value of our C. This is the value of our B. So let's insert this, uh, these numerical values in our chemical equation to see if the equation is balanced. So let's begin with A. A is 2. Here, A is 2. Then let's go to the next one, which is C. C is also 2. Then let's go to letter B. Letter B is 1. So I'm just writing this 1 uh, so that we see where each value has gone to. But in chemical equations, remember, you should never indicate 1. You should only indicate values from 2. So I'm only inserting this 1 in order to show the accurate substitutions of what we have gotten. So like that. So what's going to happen is that, let's see if our equation is balanced. So we have 2 copper, we have 2 copper, that is correct. We have 2 oxygen because 1 times 2. This is this value times 2. 1 times 2 is 2. And then also here, 2 times 1, we are going to get 2 molecules of oxygen. So it will mean that our equation is now balanced. So that is how you balance the equation. So let's look at different examples in order to understand this even better. Before we balance chemical equations, we must first of all understand what is valency and what is the importance of valency. So the definition of valency, we see that valency, this is the combining power of an element which denotes how the element is going to react with different other elements. So is the element going to gain electrons or is the element going to lose electrons in order to form compounds? So in balancing the chemical equation, we are going to look at an example whereby aluminium is reacting with oxygen. So first of all, let's check the valency. So we have aluminium. The, the atomic number of aluminium is always 13. Aluminium is atomic number 13. The electronic configuration of aluminium, remember, it is 2, 8, 3. So that's the electronic configuration, 2, 8, 3. 
So the ionic formation of aluminium, we have Al and then three positive. So why do we have three positive there? So for aluminium, it's a metal. All metals react by losing electrons. So since the charge of aluminium is positive, it will mean that aluminium is reacting by losing three electrons. So this is the electronic, the electronic configuration. If we look at it, we see that the last value on the outermost energy level for aluminium is three. Therefore, for aluminium, it is easy for aluminium to lose three electrons in order to become stable than to gain five electrons in order to become stable. Since the aluminium loses three electrons in order to become stable, therefore the charge for aluminium is three positive. The charge of positive always denotes that the element is losing electrons. So the next element we have is oxygen. So we have oxygen like that. So the, the atomic number of oxygen is eight. The electronic configuration of oxygen we have two is to six like that. So the, the ionic formation of oxygen is O and then two negative. So it is easier for oxygen to gain two electrons. The charge negative denotes gaining electrons. So negative, remember, it's gaining electrons. Positive, remember, it's losing electrons. So for oxygen, it is easier for oxygen to gain two electrons than to lose six electrons. So that's why oxygen has a charge of negative. So the other thing that you should know is that all metals have a charge of positive. That is all the metals. All the metals have a charge of positive, whereas all the non-metals have a charge of negative. Be it sulfur, be it nitrogen, be it oxygen. So all the non-metals have a charge of negative. So let's see. What happens if aluminium reacts with oxygen? So let's write the chemical reaction. So aluminium reacting with oxygen. So oxygen, it's a gas. All gases exist as molecules. So the reason why we have inserted two here is just to mean that oxygen is a gas. So all gases, remember, they exist as molecules. So this is how you represent a molecule. The atom, and then you input two in order to represent that it is, it is a molecule and not an atom. So as you can see here, uh, this aluminium, it is only single. There is no other value under the aluminium. So it is only appearing uh, as it is. So it will mean that aluminium is an atom. But if we have this atom and then we insert a two, it will mean that it is, it is a molecule. So if al aluminium reacts with oxygen, we are going to get aluminium trioxide. So this is solid. So here is the question. So why did we write Al2 or 3? So there is a reason why we wrote Al2 or 3. So in forming the products in, in a chemical reaction, we use the valences and only the valences to form the products. So this is what has happened. So remember, for this aluminium, the charge for aluminium is 3. So we have aluminium having a charge of 3 positive. So remember, the charge for oxygen is 2 negative. That is always the charge of, of oxygen. This is always the charge of aluminium. So why did we write Al2 or 3? So again, I repeat, remember, in forming chemical reactions, you only and you only use the valences to form the products. So this is how we have gotten the product. So this aluminium is reacting with oxygen. So in forming the product, these valences interchange. The valency for oxygen it comes below the aluminium like that. And then the valency of aluminium, it goes below the oxygen. So this is the valency of aluminium. It will go below the oxygen like that. The other thing that you should remember, and you should never be confused, is these values. So for example, uh, like under the oxygen, we have two. So never be confused by that value. Only and only remember that in forming the product, in forming this compound, we only use the valences, only the valences and not these other values. So here, this is what we are going to do. So this is aluminum, this is oxygen. So below aluminum, remember, below aluminum, uh, we have the two for oxygen. So they interchange the valency. Below aluminum, we have the two of oxygen. And then below the oxygen, like that, below the oxygen, we have the three for aluminum, which is three. Now, in forming the product, now this is the product that you are going to obtain. Aluminium trioxide. So this, 
this is aluminum trioxide so they have only interchanged the valencies in order to obtain uh, to obtain that product now never in your equation so in your final chemical equation you should always remember never to include this so this working you should just work it somewhere else and then after you have gotten the product transfer the product there so never show this in your working so this is only it's supposed to be only for for your consumption in order to get the correct thing so after that let's now balance the equation so let's now balance the equation whereby the aluminium is reacting with oxygen to get aluminium trioxide. So in balancing this chemical equation, it's simple. The first method that we are going to use, uh, we just check and then insert the numbers. So like for example, here we have one aluminium. Here we have two aluminium. So aluminium is not balanced. Let's, bal let's first of all balance the aluminium. So here we are going to input two in order to balance our aluminium here which is 2. So again here remember, for aluminium it's balanced, yes. Let's go to oxygen. Here we have 2 oxygen. So this 2 means that we have 2 molecules of, uh, 2 atoms or 2 elements of oxygen inside the oxygen, uh, the oxygen molecule. So what happens is that we have 2 oxygen and here we have 3 oxygen. So oxygen is not balanced. So let's balance oxygen. So what you are going to do, if we input here 3, and then we input here 2, so as to have a common factor which is 6. So it will mean that for oxygen, it is 2 multiplied by this one. So we multiply this value multiplied by that one. So 2 times 3, we are going to have, we have 6 oxygen. So here again, 3 times 2, we are going to have 6 oxygen. So oxygen is balanced. So let's now check the overall equation to see if the equation is now balanced. Let's begin from the first one, which is aluminium. So, for the aluminium, we have two aluminium. How many aluminiums do we have here? So, for the aluminiums here, remember now we have four aluminium, whereby we have two multiplied by that two. So, we have four aluminium. So, it will mean that this aluminium is not balanced. So, to balance this aluminium, we input here four, like that. So, let's now see again if the equation is balanced. So let's see if the equation is balanced. So we have four aluminium, we have four aluminium. Aluminium is balanced. Over here, we have six oxygen, and then here we have two times three, we have six oxygen. Now the equation is balanced. So there's another method for balancing chemical equation which is always accurate, and I'll advise every student to use this method because you can never fail in balancing chemical equations. So let's see. So for this method in balancing of the chemical equations, we have aluminium reacting with oxygen to get aluminium trioxide. So we are going to introduce letters. So let's introduce letter A, letter B, letter C. So remember, each letter takes individual atoms. Like here, remember, we have aluminium and oxygen, and we have C. So C is going to take aluminium and oxygen individually. So let's, let's see. A is only taking aluminium, B is only taking oxygen, and letter C is taking different atoms, or different elements rather, whereby we have element aluminium and element oxygen. So let's begin. We are going to compare the elements side by side. So the aluminium is represented by A, oxygen will be represented by B, and here the aluminium on this, the product side, aluminium will be represented by letter C, and oxygen will be represented by letter C on the product side. So this is what you do. So here we have one aluminium. Remember, we are not going to write the elements. We only use now the letters as the representatives. So we have one aluminium. So we are going to say A, which is one A. We don't write one. So in chemistry, if it is a numerical value of one, we don't write one. We only begin writing the numerical values from two Onwards. So here we have one aluminium, which is 1A, is equals to, how many aluminiums do we have on this side? We have two aluminiums. So this aluminium is represented by which letter? It is represented by letter C. So we have 2C, like that. So 1A is represented by 2C. 
For example, for this aluminium, example, if we had five aluminium, this is what we could have said. So in this side, for example, if we had five aluminium like that, we could have said 5A. We could have said 5A. 5A is equals to C. So in this side, if we could have had eight aluminium like that, if we could have had eight aluminium, we could have said that 8C. So 5A is equals to 8C. That's what we could have said. But now looking at our original equation, our original equation, this is 2. So if that is 2, this is what we are going to say. We have 1A, whereby it is A, is equals to 2C. So it's equals to 2C, like that. So we are done with A. So let's go to the next one immediately, which is B. So we are going to say, here remember we have 2. So we are going to say 2B is equal to, so here we have two molecules of oxygen. How many molecules of oxygen do we have on this side? There are three. So we're going to say 2B is equals to 3C, like that. So let's make sure that each element or each letter is represented. We have A, B, C. So here we have A, we have B, and we have C. So each letter is represented. Now we can be able to balance our equation. So if you have already reached this step, so what you should always do, you should always say that A is always equal to, to 1, like that. So if you have already reached this step, always begin by saying A is equal to 1. So look, if A is equal to 1, what about C? Using this formula, we can be able to calculate for C using this formula. So we are just only and only going to substitute in order to find what is C. So let's say C. C is equal to this formula. We can use this formula. So C is equal to A is equals to 2C. So we can use this formula to find what is C. So let's see. In substitution, we found that A is equal to 1. So A is equal to 1. So let's substitute A with 1. So we can say 1 is equal to 2C like that. So we have to make C the subject of the formula only to remain with C. So we are going to cross multiply divided by 2 divided by 2. So it will mean that C is equal to, so by 2, 1, by 2, 1. So C is equal to a half. So that is the value of C. So C is equal to a half. So let's now go to the next value which we have not, not yet gotten. We have not yet gotten B. What is B? So remember, we have A, we have C. Now let's look for B. We have A, we have C. Let's now find what is B. So we can use this formula to calculate the value of B. So we can say that B is equal to 2B is equal to 3C, like that. So remember, what did we find the value of, of, uh, of C? We found the value of C being a half. So we can say that 2B is equals to 3 times C, which is a half. So 2B is equals to 3 times a half. So let's continue. We'll say that 2B is equal to 3 and a half, like that. So in order to remain with only B on that side, so what are we going to do? We are going to, uh, we're going to divide by 2, and then divided by, divided by 2. So we are going to get B is equal to 3 over 2, whereby we are going to divide by 2. This is division. So B is equal to 3 over 2 divided by 2. So if it is 3 over 2 divided by 2, so the easiest thing to do, we are going to find the reciprocal of that 2 in order to calculate our problem. So we are going to have B is equal to 3 over 2 times the reciprocal, which is 1 over 2. So I'm going to get 3 over 4. So B is equals to 3 over 4. So let's now write everything down in order now to find the correct balancing of our equation. So we have A is equal to 1. C, which is this one, C is equal to, we found that C is equals to a, a half, this one. So it's equals to a half. And then finally we have B. B is equals to 3 over 4. So remember, in balancing chemical equations, you should never use fractions in balancing chemical equations or decimal. Balancing chemical equations, you should only and only use whole numbers in balancing. Therefore, the highest or the largest, uh, the largest denominator there is 4. So we are going to multiply everything with 4 across in order to remove, uh, to remove the fractions. So we are going to say times 4. 
So what you have done in one letter, we must do it in all the other letters. So times 4, and then times 4, and then multiplied by 4. So finally, the value of A is equal to 4. The value of B by 2, 1, by 2, 2. Value of B is equal to 2. And then this is C, rather. Value of C is equal to 2. And then finally, the value of B. The value of B is equal to by 4, 1, by 4, 1. Value of B is equal to 3. So this is what you use. A is equal to 4, C is equal to 2, and then B is equal to 3. Now let's substitute everything in our equation, in our chemical equation, in order to ascertain that the equation is balanced. Remember, if there is any step that you've gotten wrong anywhere along the way, the equation is not going to balance. So the equation itself is going to tell you which letter you got it wrong, and then you're going to check which, where you went wrong, and then correct. So let's insert these numbers in our chemical equation in order to see if we are correct. So here, the value of A is 4. So the value of A is 4. So let's begin. This is A. So we have 4 like that. So the next one, the value of C is 2. So the value of C is 2. Let's insert under C here. The value is 2. So the value of B is 3. So under B, let's write 3. Like that. So we have just substituted all this. A, we have 4. C, we have this is C, we have 2. And then B, we have 3. So let's see if our equation is balanced. So we have 4 aluminium. Then here we have 2 times 2. So 2 times 2, we have 4 aluminium. So aluminium is balanced. So let's go to the next one. Oxygen. So we have 6 oxygen, whereby it is 3 times 2. So 3 times 2, we have 6 oxygen. And then here, how many oxygen do we have? 2 times 3. So 2 times 3, we have 6 oxygen. So the equation is balanced using that formula. So this formula is very simple in balancing equations. Now let's look at another equation and use exactly the same formula in balancing another equation. So here is another chemical equation whereby we have ion reacting with chlorine to get ion 3 chloride. So as we had discussed earlier, remember the valency of ion here is 3. So you can just be able to check from here to know the valency of ion. So the valency of ion from here, it tells us that the valency of ion is 3, positive. The valency of chlorine we can check also from there. And chlorine, remember, is atomic number 17, whereby it is 287. So it's atomic number 17. So chlorine only gains one in order to become stable. So the valency of chlorine, remember, it is only one. So as we had discussed earlier, for us to form a correct compound, we only and only use the valencies in forming the compound. So as here, what we had discussed earlier, remember we say that the valency of ion, the valency of this first element always goes below the second one, and the valency of this one goes below that one in order to obtain this. So we can be able to prove that that is correct, whereby we have the valency of ion 3, or rather the valency of ion is below chlorine like that, and the valency of chlorine is below ion like that. So in chemistry, again, remember, we don't write numerical value 1, but we only write numerical values from 2 and onwards. So let's now balance this equation, whereby we have ion reacting with chlorine gas to get ion 3 chloride. So remember, a property of ion 3 chloride is that it sublimes. So it sublimes leaving a brown fume, and then on solidifying, it forms a gray solid of ion 3 chloride. So in balancing this chemical equation, we are going to use the same, same method we used in the previous one. So we're going to introduce the letters, letter A, letter B, and letter C. So here, remember, let us see we have two lettuces, whereby we have two elements on that side. So we have this element, and then we have this element. So let us see represents two elements that are independent. So let's begin from the first one. Here, remember, we have one A. So we have A. Remember, you don't write numerical value one. So you have A is equal to... So here we have one ion. How many ions do we have on this side? We have one. So A is equals to C. So one A is equals to one C. A is equal to C. So let's now go to B. So here, remember, we have two B. So we are going to say that two B is equal to, here we have two chlorine. How many chlorines do we have on this side? We have three chlorines. So two B is equals to three 
C, like that. So that's the first step. So if you have already reached this step, say the next thing whereby we, we say that A is always equal to 1. So always begin from there. Never take another value apart from 1. You'll still get it correct, but it's easier for us to begin with A is equal to 1. So if A is equal to 1, so if this is equal to 1, so it will mean that C is also equal to 1. Because if A is 1 and A is equal to C, so it will mean that C is also equal to 1. C is equal to 1, like that. So we now have A, we now have B, uh, we now have C. So we don't have B because our, our imaginary letters, we have A, B, and C. So we have to find the value of B in order now to balance the equation. So we can use this formula to calculate for B because this formula has B. So we can use this formula to calculate the value of B. So we'll say that B is equal to this formula. B is equal to 2B is equal to 3C, like that. So we are only and only going to substitute. So remember, we found the value of C as 1. So let's substitute in order to calculate for B. So we're going to say that 2B is equal to 3 times 1 because C is 1. So we already found the value of C. So 2B is equal to 3 times 1. So in simplification, we'll say that 2B is equal to, is equal to 3. We have to make B the subject of the formula in order to leave it like this. So making B the subject of the formula, we are going to divide by 2, divided by 2. So we'll say that B is equal to 3 over 2. So in order to write everything down, we'll say that A is equal to 1, what we got. C is equal to 1. And then B is equal to 3 over 2. So B is equal to 3 over 2. So again in chemistry, again remember, in balancing chemical equations, you cannot use fractions or decimals in balancing chemical equations. You must and only and only use whole numbers in balancing chemical equations. So we have to remove the fraction there. So we are going to multiply, uh, we're going to multiply by the denominator in order to remove the fraction. So we are going to say this is the denominator, so multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, and then multiplied by 2. So what we have done in one letter must be done in all the other letters in order to get the correct balancing. So if we multiply here by 2, then we should multiply everything by 2. So the reason why we multiply by 2 is only to remove the fraction, because we cannot balance using fractions. So we multiplied by the denominator in order to remove the fractions. So the value of A, therefore, A is 2. The value of C, C is also 2. And the value of B, B by 2, 1 by 2, 1. So 3 times 1, the value of B is 3. So let's now substitute everything in our equation in order to see that if we are correct. Remember, if our balancing is wrong, therefore, there is a value that won't fit in our chemical equation. If we try to balance the, the atoms, we are always going to get it wrong if we got something here wrong. But if we are correct, everything is going to go as planned. So let's begin with the first one, which is A. This is A. So A is equals to 2. So let's indicate that 2. So the next one is C. C is equal to 2. So let's write here 2. Then the next one is the next one is 3. B is equal to 3. So let's write here 3 and then check if we are correct. So let's confirm if our balancing is correct. If our balancing is correct, the atoms on this side should balance with the atoms on that side. So let's see. We have two mole uh, we have two ion, then here we have two ion. So ion is balanced. So here we have 6, 3 times 2. So 3 times 2, we get 6 chlorine. Then 2 times 3, we get 6 chlorine. So it will mean that our equation is balanced, whereby we have 2 ion, 3 chlorine, and then 2 uh, ion, ion 3 chloride. So yeah, it is correct. <laughs> so let's look another, at another example in balancing equation so as to see how best, again, we can apply the formula. So let's look at another equation whereby we are balancing sodium thiosulfate reacting with iodine. We get sodium tetrathionate plus sodium iodide. So we are going again to do the same same way as we have done for the rest of the equation. So we are going to introduce our letters, letter A, letter B, letter C, 
and then finally letter D. So what you, sh you, what you must remember is that, and what you should remember is that each, el each element takes its own portion of the letter. So never generalize a letter to that compound. So each letter takes individual elements. This is what I mean. A takes sodium element, here we have sulfur element, and then we have oxygen element. So here in B, we only have one element. In letter C, we have three elements, sulfur, and then oxygen. In letter D, we have two elements, that is that and that. So the letter must take only and only individual elements and never generalize a letter to that compound. You'll get it wrong. So let's begin with the first one, whereby we have two sodium on this side. And on this side, take note that we have sodium on letter C and we have sodium on letter D. So let's see. Here we have two A for sodium. So here it's sodium. We have sodium, which is represented by 2A, is equal to, we have 2C, so it's equal to 2C plus, never ignore the sign, so it's equals to 2C plus that 1D. That is for sodium, whereby sodium is appearing on C and D. So you treat them as uh, individuals or independent. So 2C for this one plus 1D. So you don't write one, we only write D, like that. So let's go to the next one, which is sulfur. So we have 2A, here we have 2A. Uh, 2A is equal to, because 2A, yeah. So 2A is equal to uh, 4C, whereby sulfur is appearing in C. So it's equal to 4C, like that. So we are done with sulfur. So let's now go to oxygen, which is the next one. So we have 3A. 3A is equal to, here is where oxygen is appearing. So it's equals to 6C, like that. So iodine. So we have 2B, we have 2 iodine. So we have 2B is equal to, yeah, so 2B is equal to 1D, whereby it's only appearing in D. So 2B is equals to D. So all the elements uh, have been dealt with. So we have dealt with all the elements in that, in that chemical equation. So if all the elements, if all the letters are appearing, we have letter A somewhere, we have letter C somewhere, we have letter D, we have letter B somewhere. So you can now be able to calculate. So we always begin by saying, let A be, let A be one. We always begin by saying that, let A be one. So after saying that, let A be one, we can use this formula to calculate the value of C. We can as well use this formula to calculate the value of, of C. But here we have D, so we cannot use this because we still don't know D. We can also use this formula to calculate the value of C. So we can use this formula and this formula to calculate the value of C. So let's take this one. Let's, let's calculate the value of C using this formula. So you can say that C is equal to this formula, which is 2A. 2A is equal to 4C like that, so 2A is equal to 4C. So A, remember, A is one, so let's substitute A is one, so two times one is equal to 4C. So it will mean that two is equal to 4C. So we only need to remain with C on that side. So what do we do? We divide by four, we divide by four, like that. So by four, one, by four, one, by four, one, by four, two. So the value of C, C is equal to C is equal to a half, one over two. So C is equal to a half. So that's the value of C. So we now know the value of A is one. The value of C, we have calculated is a half using this formula. We have calculated C, the value of C is a half. So let's now calculate the value of, now we have the value of A and C. So let's have the value of B. Is it possible to calculate the value of B? Now let's calculate first of all the value of D because we have A and we have C. Let's calculate first of all the value of D. So D is equal to this formula. So this formula will give us D. So D is equal to that formula which is 2A. Uh, 2A is equal to 2C plus D. So let's substitute. Remember we found that A is one and we found that C is a half. So you can use this formula to calculate the value of D. So we'll say that two times one is equal to, what did we find C? C we found that it was a half. So it's equals to two times a half plus D. 
So we have just substituted everything. So we are going to say 2 is equal to by 2, 1, by 2, 1. So 2 is equal to 1 plus d, like that. So if the, the, here we have a positive sign, according to mathematics. So if we move this one across the equal sign, it becomes negative. So if it becomes negative, we're going to have 2 minus 1 is equal to d. So therefore, it will mean that the value of d, d is equal to 1. So let's write it here. So d is equal to 1, according to this formula. So we have used this formula to calculate the value of d. Since d is appearing here, therefore, you can use this formula to calculate. And you have calculated the value of d and found out that the value of d is 1. So what don't we have? We don't have b. We don't now have b. So you can use this formula to calculate the value of b by substitution. So we have b is equal to this formula, whereby it is 2, it is 2b, 2b is equal to d. So let's use this formula to calculate for the value of b. So let's substitute. So we don't have b. Since we don't have b, we'll just say 2b is equal to, what did we get d? We got d as 1. So let's substitute 1. So remember, we only need the value of b on this side. So we are going to divide by 2, divide by 2 in order to only remain with b. So we're going to get that b is equal to a half because by 2, 1, by 2, 1. So on this other side, we only have a half. So b is equal to a half. So let's now write everything down in order to see what we have gotten. So we have a is equal to 1 and then c, we got c next. C was equal to a half, this one. And then the next one is we got D. D is equal to 1. So remember this. So D is equal to 1. And then finally we got B. B is equal to a half. So B is equal to 1 over 2. Like that. So remember again, in balancing chemical equations, we don't use fractions or decimal places. We only use whole numbers. So we are going to multiply across by 2 since we have two denominators that are 2. So we are going to multiply everything by 2 in order to get now the correct balancing of sodium thiosulfate. So multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, and then multiplied by 2. So here A is equals to 2, C is equals to 1, D is equals to, so by 2, 1, by 2, 1, so D is equals to 2, and then B by 2, 1, by 2, 1, so B is also equal to 1. So that is the value that you have gotten. So let's now substitute everything in our equation in order to ascertain that you are correct. So the value of A is 2, so let's insert 2. The value of C is 1, so we have C is 1. So we don't write 1 in chemistry because it's 1. So the value of C is 1. The value of D is 2. So here we have 2. And then the value of B is 1. So here we have 1. So remember, A is, A is 2. And then C is 1. We don't write 1. D is 2. We have written the 2. And then B is 1. So let's now prove to see that our equation is indeed balanced. So let's begin. Here we have two molecules of sodium. So it is these two multiplied by, by these two. So 2 times 2, we get 4 sodium. So here we get 2 sodium. So here we have 2 sodium plus 2 other sodium. So don't ignore this plus. So we have 2 sodium plus 2 sodium. So we have 4 sodium. So remember, sodium is balanced. So we have 2 sodium here. And then from there again, we have 2 sodium plus 2 sodium, whereby we have, we have 4 sodium. So let's go to sulfur. We have 4 sulfur, 2 times 2. So it is this 2, 2 times 2. So we have 4 sulfur on this side. So let's look at sulfur. Here we have 4 sulfur. So sulfur is balanced. So let's go to oxygen. So it is 2 times 3, we have 6 oxygen. So 2 times 3, 6 oxygen. So on this other side, we have 6 oxygen. So oxygen is balanced. So let's now look at iodine. Iodine here, we have 2 iodine. So on this other side, it is 2 times this one iodine, we get 2 iodine. So since everything is balanced, we'll say that the equation is indeed balanced using that formula. So again, let's look at another chemical equation and use the formula to balance the equation. 
So now let's look at this other equation whereby we have ethene burning in oxygen to form carbon dioxide plus water. So this is a hydrocarbon belonging to the family of alkenes. So as you had learned in Form 1, we saw that in Form 1 and in Form 3, the ones that are in Form 3, we saw that when hydrocarbons burn in oxygen, we always get these two. We always get carbon dioxide and water. So if any hydrocarbon will burn in oxygen, you are going to get carbon dioxide and water. So in our case, we have ethene. Ethene burning in oxygen, we get carbon dioxide plus water. So the question is balance the following chemical equation. So again, let's introduce our letters in order to start working out on the balancing. So we have letter A having these two. We have letter B having only this one. We have letter C having carbon and having oxygen. And then we have letter D having hydrogen and oxygen. So let's begin. We always begin from letter A whereby we are going to say here we have two carbons. So we are going to say two a is equal to how many carbons do we have on this side we have one carbon so is equals to c like that so 2a is equal to c so let's go to the next one hydrogen so we have 4a for hydrogen that is 4a is equal to how many hydrogens do we have on this side we have two hydrogens appearing under d so 4 hydrogen is equal to 2d like that so 4 hydrogen is equal to 2d so after that, let's now go to B. So rather, we have 2B. So for B, we have 2B. That is 2. 2B is equal to, here we have 2 oxygen. So here we have oxygen appearing under C and oxygen appearing under D. So we must treat them independently. So we have 2C. So is equals to 2C plus here we have oxygen under D, whereby it is one oxygen plus one, uh, plus rather plus D. Like that. So it is plus, plus D. Yeah. So every letter has been dealt with. So we have something letter A, we have letter B somewhere, we have letter C somewhere, and then we have letter D somewhere. And also apart from checking the letters, all the elements have been dealt with. So all the elements from here, here, and here, we have dealt with all the elements. So let's begin from the first part, whereby we always say that A is equal to 1. So that's always the first step. A is equal to 1. So using this, we can be able to calculate the value of C. Using that, we substitute here. So C will be equal to this formula, whereby we have 2A is equal to C. So we'll use this formula to calculate the value of C. So A, remember, is 1. So let's substitute 2 times 1 is equal to C, whereby we have 2 is equal to C. So the value of C, therefore, C, therefore, is equal to 2, like that. So we use this formula to calculate the value of C. Since we knew the value of A, it was now easy to calculate for the value of C. And therefore, we use this formula like here. We substituted with the value of A, which is 1. And then we calculated the value of C, whereby the value of C is equal to 2. So let's look at another one. So which other one can we be able to calculate? Here we have D. So let's calculate the value of D since we know the value of A. So let's calculate the value of D. So we'll say that D is equal to this formula. So D is equal to 4A is equal to 2D. So you can use this formula to calculate the value of the value of D. Let's, let me write this here. So C is equal to 2. So the value of D. We can use this formula to calculate the value of D. Whereby we are going to say the value of A, remember, is 1. So we are going to say 4 times 1 is equal to 2D. So we're going to say 4 is equal to 2D because 4 times 1 is always equals to 4. So divided by 2, divided by 2. So by 2, 1, by 2, 1. This is 4. By 2, it is 2. By 2, it is 1. Therefore, the value of D is also 2. This is the value of D. So the value of D is 2, like that. So we now have the value of A. We now have the value of C. We now have the value of D. So there is one letter missing. We have A, B, C, D. So we don't have value of B. So let's see, which formula can we use to calculate for the value of B? 
So here, this is the only formula that B is appearing. So this is the only formula to use. So B is equals to that formula whereby we have 2B is equal to 2C plus D. So it's equals to 2C plus D. That's the value. So we can use this formula to calculate for the value of D since we have C and then we have D. So let's see. So we have 2B is equal to, let's substitute the value of C. We got the value of C as 2. So is equals to 2 times 2. And then plus, what did we get the value of D? The value of D is 2. Like that. So 2B is equal to 4 plus 2. Because this is 2 times 2, we get 4. And then plus 2. So 2B is equal to 6. Because 4 plus 2, we get 6. So we only need to remain with B over 2. So it will mean that B is equal to 3. Like that. So let's now write, rewrite everything on the other side in order to know how each letter is appearing. So A is equal to 1. We got C is equal to 2. We got D. D is equal to 2. And then finally we got B is equal to 3. So B is equal to 3. So remember, in balancing chemical equations, if something you got wrong there, so the equation won't be balanced. If any numerical value is wrong, so in that specific letter, you're going to realize that in that specific letter, the balancing is wrong. And therefore, you will come to check in the formula where you, go, uh, where you went wrong, and then you're going to rectify. So let's input the values, the numerical values in a chemical equation to see if we are correct. So the value of A is 1. We don't write 1, but we know that is 1. So the value of C is 2. So let's write 2. The value of D is 2. Let's write 2 like that. The value of B is 3. Like that. So let's, let's do the calculation and see if we are correct. So here we have 2C. So here we have 2C. 2 carbons. So 2 times 1. So here it's 1. So 2 times 1, we are going to get 2 carbons. So carbon is balanced. Carbon 2, carbon 2. Carbon is balanced. So let's look at hydrogen. Here we have 4 hydrogens. Here we have 2 times 2. So we have 4 hydrogens. So it is 2 times this 2. We have 4 hydrogen. So hydrogen is balanced. It's okay. So let's go now to oxygen. We have 6 oxygen. So it is 2 times 3. Rather, it is 3 times 2. So if you multiply 3 times 2, on this side we get 6 oxygen. So let's compare with the other side. So here we have, two oxy we have 4 oxygen because it is 2 times 2. We have 4 oxygen. And then plus, here we have 2 times this one. So 2 times this one, we get 2 oxygen. So here we are going to add. So 2 times 2, we have 4 oxygen here. And then plus 2 times this one, 2 times 1, we get 2. So we are going to get 6 oxygen. So 6 oxygen on this side and then 6 oxygen on this side. So the equation is balanced. Now let's meet on the next session as we continue to balance even more chemical equations that are even more complicated than this one or even much simpler than the ones that you have already done.